Hello, everybody. We are back on the Mopar 440 project, and this is the next step in degreeing the cam. Get the camera set up here so we can see what's going on. That should be close enough. And yeah, uh, this video is going to be the first of two. Um, we're going to first get started by putting the degree wheel on the crankshaft, um, get it dialed into top dead center relative to piston number one. Okay, so uh, first thing you need is a dial indicator, and uh, you're going to want one that has uh, enough travel to, you know, catch the piston coming up on that last, you know, half inch or inch of the bore, and a magnetic base. So let's get this set up. And we're going to go right around here, flip the lever on the little electromagnet there. Okay. And then bring this down. Now I have the piston down on the bore. Um, I'm going to want to get this so that uh, I'm just using this as a kind of a gauge. Okay. As to where the top of the deck is. And see if I can get this close. What you want to do is have the dial indicator right on the center of the piston, at least on the center line, if not the dead center. Um, you, you don't want it too high up or too far down because in theory the piston could, you know, be rocking on its wrist pin. So aim at the center, okay, and I think you're going to be better off. So there's that. Let me see if I can bring this down just a little bit more. And have the indicators travel be right in line with the piston travel as best you can. Okay, that's pretty close. All right. Well, let's see what's next here. Let's set this aside for a moment. Let's grab the bolt for the crank and We'll just put it in somewhat lightly now. And we're gonna bring this piston up to top dead center, okay? Got my socket. Let's tighten up a little bit. And there it starts to move. I mean, you're fighting the friction of eight pistons, you know, eight sets of rings. And uh, there is quite a bit of friction there. So I put a little oil on the bores just to help that out a little bit. And let's bring this around. Okay, I'm starting to see some movement there. Okay. And it looks like it's getting close to the top. See that needle stop moving. We know we're close. Right around there. Okay, so that's close to top dead center. And we're gonna verify if it's exact in a moment here. So let's uh, bring this around to zero. Let's go the other way, I guess. Okay. Right there, zero on the uh, dial. Okay, so now what we'll do is we'll take a look at the timing set. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take this uh, bolt off of here for a second. Let's grab my little battery impact. That ought to do the trick. Okay. Barely. <laughs> this thing's not too powerful. I'll get a bigger impact in a few minutes for uh, tightening that down before we start moving the engine backwards and forwards. Kind of the premise here is we're gonna see if we're at top dead center by moving the piston, you know, down in the bore, rotating the engine backwards, and then we're gonna come back to top dead center and then and, and past it and, and split the difference. That's what we're uh, basically doing right now to get the degree wheel uh, in the right spot. Okay, well, let's take a look at the timing chain set. get out of the box here. There we go. All right, so the lower gear that goes on the crank has a zero. In this case, I've got a bunch of other marks for advancing or retarding it if we find out that the zero is not accurate. And there's a dot. Here's the dot. 
that's going to face straight up. And with the piston at top dead center, you see the keyway is over here on a 45. So that's where the zero is. It's over here on a 45. Okay. So just like that with the dot facing up. Okay. Now let's look at the top gear. Here's a dot. It's going to be facing down. Uh, you'll notice here the, uh, this keyway is kind of off at mm, the four o'clock position, I'd say. So we want to move the cam and get it kind of close to that. We'll make it easier to get that on. So let's see if we can just spin this around just a little bit. I'm going to guess right around there. We're going to find out here in a second. Okay, let's see if we can install this. This is just our first attempt. And then we're going to verify everything later. But let's see if we can get this lined up dot to dot. Okay, that looks pretty good there. And bring it into the cam. I'd like to move this gear in a little bit more. Okay, that looks good. It went right on. Okay, grab my cam bolt. This is not the final installation. Later I have a brand new bolt that will lock tight in place, but we have to verify the timing. And I'm just gonna put this in temporarily. Okay, grab my socket for that. Snug this up. There's a lock washer on it, so I'm just going to bring it in kind of snug. Okay, good. And let's check the dial indicator, see if anything moved here. Well, it's just a hair off. That might be because I took this off with the impact, too. So let's not mess with it. Let's just see where we're at. Okay, um, before you put your degree wheel on, get yourself a pointer. It can be a piece of wire, a coat hanger, whatever you like. And uh, just pick one of these timing cover bolt holes and get that thing set up so you'll be able to point at the uh, degree wheel. When the degree wheel has top dead center. Of course, it's got 360 increments all the way around. Our first attempt here, we'll get the bolt in here. Start it out here. Well, I'll slide it behind our pointer if I can. Okay, it's pretty good. And top dead center. We're going to bring it around. Now, this is saying I'm a few thousands past, but this is a good demonstration. We'll see how close we are. All right, so let's. Get this thing set up so it's as close as we can to top dead center. I'm going to tighten that bolt down. Okay. Let's see if I can get in there without moving things. We can always adjust it and bend it. That's why it's just made of wire if we have to. Okay. That's real close. Right there. Okay, now I'm going to grab the impact and tighten this down a little bit more because we're going to be turning the engine backwards and we don't want to loosen the bolt. Okay, so let's see here. That should be enough. Let's give it a good hit. All right. Now, what I'm going to do is bring the piston back down on the bore. We're going to rotate it backwards. Okay. So down she goes. Okay, I'm going to move it until the indicator just kind of loses touch with it. There it is. Okay. And we're going to start to bring it back. And we're going to try to note when we're about 50 thousandths before the top. Okay. So right about there is 50 thousandths, okay? And I'm going to note where I'm at on the degree wheel. So on the degree wheel, I'm at 12 degrees, okay? And we're going to kind of be splitting the difference. So let me bring this down so you can see it. It's 
right there. I guess the camera's, on my phone's a little offset, but hopefully I was looking at it square for you. Okay. And that 12 is aligned with 50,000. So let's continue to go up to zero. Okay. And there's zero. And now we're going to check the wheel. It's saying I'm about a degree before. Let's keep going and come 50 thousandths after. Okay. There we go. And then let's check where we're at. Okay. Let me bring the camera in here. And if I'm looking at it straight on, it's 12 degrees. So I guess we got pretty lucky there. Um, you know, we went 50 thousandths before, 50 thousandths after. It's reading 12 degrees on either side of TDC. So I think, you know, where we had come up and eyeballed it at top dead center was really, really close. If you found out you were like 14 degrees on one and 10 on the other, you would just have to move this and get it set up so that, you know, you are really at top dead center when you think you are. There's a little bit of dwell time when that piston gets there, right? You know, it's, it's coming around on the journal of the crank and it gets to the top and as it's sweeping across the top of its, you know, circular motion, there's very little, you know, vertical movement there. So there's, that's why I say there's a little bit of dwell time when you get to the top. So, okay, that's the premise of how you get this set up. Um, you can check it a couple times and make sure you're right. Um, this is gonna be the basis of our timing checks for the camshaft. So next we're going to have a video for putting the dial indicator in here on the intake and exhaust lobes. And we're gonna verify where they are at timing wise relative to the piston being at top dead center. All right, well, I think that's a wrap for today. Uh, that's a good short video.